Over the past couple of years, we've had a number of big features make their way into the Go programming language. Some of these include generics added back in version 1.18, improved backwards compatibility starting with 1.21, and of course, my personal favourite, the all new advanced routing features added in 1.22. For every big feature found in the release notes, there are a number of smaller ones added to the language as well, some of which I tend to overlook. One of these overlooked features was actually added to the language back in February of 2021, in version 1.16. That feature is the embed package, which allows you to embed files inside of your Go binary at compile time. Despite it being in the language for nearly four years, I hadn't actually used it in a production setting. However, I think that was a mistake, as recently I've started to see its value, and it's actually a lot more useful than I initially thought. The reason that I hadn't used this package before was because initially, I didn't really know what problems it could be used to solve. However, whilst recently working on a new production-ready middleware package that I intend to use with multiple projects, I actually ran into a problem that I ended up using this feature to solve. And through doing so, I've come to appreciate the package more than I ever thought I would. So much so that I now use it in a number of different ways. Before we take a look at some of the ways I use this package, let's quickly take a moment to see how it actually works. The basic idea is that you use the embed package to bundle files inside of your application binary at compile time, allowing you to then access the contents as if they were hard coded. To see this in action, here I have a project that contains a file called hello.txt that lives inside of the same directory as my main function. In this case, I want to load the contents of this file inside of my application and print it to the console. Rather than taking the typical approach of loading the file in at runtime, using something such as the os.readfile function, instead we can use the embed feature to load it in at compile time. To do so, we first need to import the embed package. Here you'll notice that I'm importing it using the blank identifier as the explicit package name. This is used to prevent the compiler from throwing an error, as there won't be any explicit references to this package in this code. Next, in order to embed a file, we first need to define a variable in order to store the contents of it. In my case, I'm going to give this the name of data. You'll notice that this variable is defined inside of the package scope, rather than inside of the local scope of the main function. This is intentional, as the embed package can't work with locally scoped variables, so that's something to keep in mind. Next, we then need to define the variable's type, which can either be one of three. These are either a byte array, a string, or a third type the fs type of the embed package, which we'll take a look at in more detail later on. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and set this type to be a string, as I know I want to print it to the console. Now, in order to load the contents of the file into this variable, I can use the go embed directive using the following syntax. Here I'm specifying the name of the file that I want to load, which in this case is hello.txt. This will attempt to load a named file from the relative path where the code or package lives, which is an important part of this feature. Now all that remains in order to print out this code to the console is to add in the following fmt.printline statement inside of the main function. Now I can go ahead and build my application using the go build command inside of a new terminal window, which should embed the file inside of the binary. If I go ahead and execute this binary, we can see that it's working correctly, printing out the string hello world, which also happens to be the contents of my hello.txt file. Now, in order to show that this file has been embedded, let's first delete the hello.txt file from the file system before running the code once again. As you can see, it still prints out the same hello world string, despite the file no longer existing on the system. This also means if I now try to rebuild this code, I'll get a compilation error, as the file no longer exists on the file system for it to be embedded. However, if I recreate this file again, you can see that I'm now able to build it. That covers a basic example of how to use the embed package. But what are some of the ways that I use it when it comes to my production Go code? Before we take a look at what those are, however, let me quickly ask you a couple of questions. Question number one, are you looking to learn back-end web development skills using either Python or Go? And question number two, do you happen to like role-playing games? Well, if you answered yes to both of these, then you may be interested in the sponsor of today's video, Boot.dev. Boot.dev is an online platform where you're able to master back-end web development using both Python and Go. 
Rather than being a typical e-learning platform, Boot.dev takes a much more enjoyable approach, applying many concepts from role-playing video games to make the process of e-learning not only rewarding, but also more enjoyable, preventing you from getting bored, but instead making the learning process more fun. By learning on Boot.dev, you'll earn experience points, levels, achievements, and complete quests in order to get a top spot on the global leader board. The platform is designed to get you writing a ton of code, because getting your hands on the keyboard and shipping projects is one of the best ways to really learn. Additionally, the team at Boot.dev have done everything they can to make sure it's as risk-free as possible, providing you with a free demo of all of the interactive lessons a course provides, as well as a 30-day, no questions asked, money-back guarantee. So to try everything that Boot.dev Dev has to offer, click the link in the description down below and use my coupon code DREAMSOFCODE to get 25% off your first payment for boot.dev. That's 25% off your first month or your first year, depending on which subscription that you choose. A big thank you to boot.dev for sponsoring this video. So now that we know how the embed package works, let's take a look at some of the ways I actually use it. The first of these is how I came to rediscover the embed package in the first place, using it to embed Lua files that I can subsequently use with Redis. As I mentioned at the start, recently I've been building a production-ready middleware package that I want to use for future projects with Go. One of the middleware found in this package is a rate limiter which uses a Redis client in order to store the number of requests a client makes. In order for this algorithm to work, I ended up implementing it using a Lua script. I actually have a video in the works about how this is implemented, but if you're unaware, Redis and its forks allow you to use Lua scripts in order to perform some part of your application's logic that interacts with multiple Redis commands, atomically, which means it's able to prevent race conditions. Initially, I was loading this script at runtime using the read file function of of the OS package. However, because I wanted to distribute this code for other people to use as a third-party package, by adding in a Lua script that needs to be loaded at runtime, it was going to cause a number of issues. The first of these was related to security, due to the fact that the script could be modified before loading it in, either maliciously or accidentally. To solve this, I went about hard coding in a checksum to compare against the contents of the script, ensuring that it was the same before loading it in. Whilst this solution worked for preventing any mutated scripts from being loaded, it unfortunately didn't solve the core issue that I had which was how to effectively distribute this script. Because the middleware package was loading this script at runtime, then it needed to be available on the file system of any deployed application that was built using it. To show why this is an issue, let's first add this middleware package to a project using the go get command, before adding in the rate limiter middleware as follows. Then if I try to run this code, you can see that it causes a panic when trying to load the Lua script. This is because the script itself is not where the middleware thinks it is, due to how relative paths work during runtime with the current working directory. Therefore, in order to solve this, I would have to inform every consumer of this package where they needed to place this Lua script, or allow them to configure it using an environment variable. Either way, it just felt like a bad user experience, so I decided to look at what other options I had in order to load this script. The first of these was to just hard code the script inside of my code, meaning it would be loaded at compile time rather than runtime. Whilst this solved both the security and distribution issues, it made the Lua script itself a pain to work with. This is because when it came to the Lua code itself, I no longer had syntax highlighting, code completion, or even linting. However, through this hard coded implementation, I remembered another compile time option that was available in Go for loading in files the embed package. By using it, I could replace the hard-coded Lua script with the embed directive, which ended up giving me the best of both worlds, allowing me to distribute the script effectively whilst also keeping it as a separate file. This solution worked so well that I started to look at other ways that I could use the embed package, which ended up bringing me to not only the second use case on this list, but also perhaps my favorite one database migrations. Typically, when it comes to my Go projects, I perform database migrations during the application startup using the fantastic Golang Migrate package. 
This package allows me to load in my SQL files from the file system at runtime before applying them to my database. Whilst this approach does work, it unfortunately comes with a couple of caveats, with the most major one being increased complexity when it comes to deploying my application. This is because by reading in the migration files at runtime, I need to make sure they're available in the file system wherever my app is deployed. Most of the time, in my case, this means adding them into the Docker file, as well as setting up an environment variable in order to be able to configure where these migration files can be found. Whilst this approach works, it certainly adds to the overall complexity of my application deployments. And if I wasn't using something such as Docker, which makes my deployments immutable, this could even be more of a concern. Fortunately, by using the embed package, I can solve all of these problems. But how to do so? Well, this is where that third type that's supported by the embed directive comes in, which is the FS type of the embed package. This type has the unique property of allowing you to embed multiple files, allowing you to create an embedded file system. In order to show how this works, here I have an example project that contains a number of database migrations inside of the migrations directory. In order to embed these into my project, first I need to create a new package variable with the embed.fs type. In my case, I'm naming this migrations. Then in order to embed multiple files, I can use the following embed directive similar to what we've seen before. However, rather than pointing this to a single file, instead I'm using the following glob syntax to name all of the SQL files found inside of the migrations directory. In order to understand how we can use this embedded file system with the migrate package, let's take a quick look at the methods that the fs type has. The first is the read dir method, which is used to obtain a list of entries found inside of the named directory in the file system. For example, here I'm using it to pull out all of the files found inside of the migrations directory inside of my embedded file system. The second method found inside of the fs type is called read file, which takes the name of a file as a parameter and returns back a byte array, or an error if the file doesn't exist. We can use this method to pull out the contents of a file inside of a file system by its name. The last, but certainly not least, method of the fs type is named open, which again takes the file name as a parameter, but this time, rather than returning a byte array, instead returns a file type found in the fs package, provided that the named file exists. This method is actually what makes the fs type so powerful, as it causes it to conform to the fs interface of the fs package. This interface is accepted by a number of different methods in other packages found in the standard library and third-party dependencies as well, including the Golang Migrate package through the use of its IOFS source, which takes an IOFS type in order to perform database migrations. Therefore, in order to use the embedded file system, we can create a new migration source using the new function of the IOFS package, passing in our embedded file system as the first argument, followed by the relative path where our migration files are found, in my case, inside of the migrations directory. Then, by using the newest source instance function of the Golang migrate package, I can create an instance of the migrator that takes the IOFS source, containing the embedded file system. Now, all that remains is to call the up method of this migrator in order to perform the migrations. In order to show that this is working with the embedded file system, let's first build this code using the go build command, followed by then deleting the migrations directory off the disk. Now, if I create a new database instance using psql, followed by executing my binary, if I go ahead and check the database relations in this database, I can see that the migrations have been applied, even without the files being found on disk. This allows me to solve my existing issues that I typically find when deploying code that uses migrations. In fact, I've already made this change on my guestbook web app, featured in my production ready VPS video. Here is the actual commit where I made the change to embed the migration files instead of loading them from disk. You can find this commit on GitHub if you want to review it yourself. In fact, I actually made three different changes to this project in order to make use of embedded files. The second of these changes was to use embedded files for loading and parsing HTML templates. Similar to database migrations, typically I would load these HTML templates during my application startup from the file system, meaning that I ran into the same issues where I needed to make sure they were available during runtime. To instead use an embedded file system, first I can load these templates as follows, using the following glob with the go embed directive that we saw before. Then rather than using the parse glob method of the template struct, 
I can instead use the parsefs method, which takes an io.fs type. Then all I need to do is pass in the relative path, which contains all of my template files. Now, when I go ahead and run this code, you can see that it works with my HTML templates being rendered. What's really nice about this is I can easily distribute this binary anywhere else and the HTML templates will also be distributed as well. Again, I've made this change into my guestbook web app under the following commit, which once again, you can view yourself if you like. The fourth way that I've been using the embed package is when it comes to serving static files. Similar to database migrations and HTML templates, I've typically achieved this by reading in from the file system at runtime, using the file server function of the HTTP package coupled with the http.dir function. To replace this with the embedded file system, I instead now use it with the file server fs function from the http package, passing in the embedded file system as follows. Unlike the other two approaches, however, this one actually requires a little bit more consideration. This is because all embedded files in Go are loaded into memory, which does give the benefit of increased performance but has the drawback of using more system memory. Therefore, I would only recommend using the embed package for serving certain types of static files, such as style sheets, JavaScript, and some smaller images. For anything larger, such as photos or videos, then I would consider keeping these on the file system instead. Additionally, if any files that you want to serve aren't available at build time, then you'll want to use the HTTP file server function in this case as well. That wraps up the four major ways that I currently use the embed package. However, I am still considering some other use cases, such as loading in configuration files that I typically use when working with Viper. If there's any other ways that I haven't mentioned that you yourself use when it comes to the embed package, then I'd love to hear from you. You can let me know in the comments down below. Either way, I'm really glad to have rediscovered the embed package and how I can use it to solve a number of pain points that I've typically encountered in Go. In any case, I want to give a big thank you to boot.dev for sponsoring this video. If you're looking to learn backend web development in Go, then do check them out using the link found in the description down below. And make sure to use my coupon code DREAMSOFCODE to get that discount as well. Otherwise, I want to give a big thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.